Previously on Restoration, alarming secrets were revealed as the team read through the files recovered from the records room at Aptap. Serathiel received an unexpected letter, and the team will now have to go back and try to pretend everything is normal. We begin probably with V sneaking Serathiel back into Aptap because you being out at night when not on a mission is technically- Technically breaking the rules, yeah. Yeah. Ooh. It's a little bit okay because you're with your handler, but like still would be better if fewer people saw you. And for the record, you didn't ask, but Serathiel didn't sleep at all. He looks like shit. No trancing for this boy. No, wait. He's no. Ca- he's not capable of looking like shit. That's not possible. Well, it's possible, but it's, like, you know, disheveled, sparkly garbage. like, sexy. Yeah, but, like, is he, like, still, like, really sexy? Like, if you're, like, into, like, dirty, disheveled boys, are you like, oh, yeah. Yeah, the troubled, the troubled genius, that kind of, yeah, exactly. Chaz, when you get back to your lab for the morning, mm. or whatever time period of the day, you find a note from Tanya with a mug of coffee and a letter underneath it. The first thing he notices is the coffee, and he's just like, oh, what a darling. I love her so much. And also, what is this? <laughs> and he investigates the note. It's a small letter that is neatly folded and sealed with red wax. And it's addressed simply to Chasmir. Uh, there's no address or anything. And Tanya had scribbled a note that uh, this came for you a couple days ago, and she forgot to get it to you in all the confusion of the past two days. Fair enough. He opens it. He's like, all right, whatever. If it's from Tanya, you know, he's drinking the coffee like, (laughs) she left this for me. Like, obviously, I trust Tanya. So So the letter says, Chasmir, I received your information through a mutual friend, Tanya Malivska. She indicated you are investigating the warlocks associated with the bombing at Aptap headquarters. My associates and I have been looking into them as well. He sort of arches his eyebrow, like, at the word associates, like, okay. The warlocks call themselves the Warriors of the Burning Star. Clearly, their yet unknown patron has a flair for the dramatic. He rolls his eyes. (laughs) We believe the Order is also connected somehow with the fluctuating powers of the clerics of Labellus Unrath, as the Order emerged around the same time. It may be just a coincidence, but it seems unlikely. I've been tracking them as a favor to Ms. Malivska and think their headquarters are in the old Dorvan tunnels beneath the city. We hope to capture and question some of them. The way that this was folded, there was a note scrawled on the outside of the letter, just as letters were written to conserve paper as much as possible. So this is just a case where it's written on the outside. Writing on the outside, rather, says, If you and your companions are able to help us hunt them, meet us at the entrance near Everdusk Hall. On 13, Elysis at midnight. Sincerely, M. Empathic. Boom, boom, boom. Thinking to himself, like, oh, this is all very interesting, but the part about Warriors of the Burning Star and the patron with a flair for dramatic, he's like, oh, it certainly does. He's like, oh, now that I know who that is. <laughs> does the name M. Empathic mean anything to, I guess, Chesme, since he's the only one who's written it? He's like, hmm, okay, well, cheers, Tanya. Thanks for passing this on to me. But yeah, you don't need to roll anything like It's not familiar to you. It's not a very prestigious name or anything like that. He folds it and puts it in one of the compartments of his belt. Question is, what are you going to do with that knowledge now that you have it, Chaz? Are you going to bring it to the team or just going to sit with it? He's going to bring it to the team, you know, eventually. As I said, after I read the letter, I have to make sure that everything is in my lab is in order. (laughs) Okay. The letter was dated 7 Elysis. 
Mm -hmm. And it is now 10 Elysis. Okay. You do have a little bit of a deadline because he asks you to meet on the 13th. He's like, well, that's not now. So. (laughs) Okay. We'll sit on it. (laughs) Luckily, your lab is not too disturbed. Looks like none of the mud methods got in. Good. That's exactly. He's like, wait a minute. Gwen caused chaos. Did it reach my stuff? Oh, shit. You know, some of your stuff is not in the right place, but that looks more like the Fey Dragon got in and you're used to mm. it doing this right, shit because it knows yeah. that it annoys you and it takes mm-hmm. pleasure in that. But yeah, no, everything else is pretty much where it's supposed to be. That's good. I like that. Gwen or Serathiel, what is your idea of laying low? Serathiel's just, his idea is just staying in his room, basically. I would imagine like you're staying in your room or maybe training with Taina, things that you would normally do. Uh, in this particular mood, she'd probably have to encourage him to leave his room. Like he'd do it, but only at her urging. Mm. Yeah, she's got some other things on her mind after talking to her twin the other night. So Yeah, that's fair. So probably mostly just sticking to his room. Okay. He's not feeling particularly sociable. Gwen's like in a panic, obviously. <laughs> So he's been being very suspicious just because that's just who he is. So as he, he's just like, he's doing all his normal like intern duties, but, you know, very poorly and being as like, you know, edgy and jumpy as humanly possible. And every time somebody mentions like the like the lab, he's like, I was not there that night. Man, can you tell me about it? Because I wasn't <laughs> there. Nowhere near the hall. I was on the other side of the city. Fiernan sees you during one of these moments, like he's just walking to get something from one of the other rooms, and he kind of co-ops you to get supplies for him to keep you from these, you know, interactions. That's probably best. Keep an eye on you. I tell Fiernan, I'm like, Fiernan, I think think I've been really sneaky, okay? Nobody knows what's been happening. It's, I I think I've managed to really keep my cool, and I like give him a wink, and I'm like, but I'll I'll get your supplies for you. Oh, Gwen. (laughs) Still, you've you've had a rough few days. I feel like you could use an easier task today. That's true. Making coffee is a lot of concentration. Because mm. you have to get it just right. I, I start explaining the nuances of coffee making. <laughs> like Probably like cold brew, because like, that feels like what he's into. <laughs> Viernan is good enough at doing the like half listening thing, because he has enough siblings that he's used <laughs> to tuning people out while still being engaged to mm-hmm. the conversation. He replies at appropriate moments, but he's definitely more focused on the file that he's reading than you. That's fair. Well, he gets a nice one-sided lecture about how exactly you should make your coffee in the morning. (laughs) And how incredibly complex. And really, honestly, it's chemistry. Like, people don't tell you about this, but honestly, making coffee is chemistry. Most cooking is. Especially baking. It's very true. Fearnit, I'm so glad that you and I had this lovely conversation. Okay, I'm going to go file those things now. And I, I, like, saunter off. Okay. (laughs) You're acting a little less squirrely, so he feels better about letting you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's not going to last. But no, okay. it won't. But that's okay. <laughs> I feel like when you guys got back, one of you probably subtly inquired after the administrant. You know, not Gwen, because you're not capable of being subtle right now. It's very true. Let's have Chaz be the one to do that. <laughs> Please, God. He's like, well, I've got nothing else to do today, so... Go bug your bestie! <laughs> yeah. By the way, where is Oriana these days, anyway? Well, normally she would be here, but I think she was taking a couple of her uh, vacation days. You know, like she did uh, a couple months ago. She used up a few more of them this time, I think. She did not to call with anything less than, oh. you know, like, another bombing. Hmm. Vacation sounds nice. Doesn't it just? I mean, like, have you ever thought about using the bracer and just getting a couple extra days? I'm thinking about it right now. Like, I just want to let you know, like, as you were talking, it was already in my mind. (laughs) Man. Tanya, that's a (laughs) wheel. Sorry. (laughs) Oh, she perfectly well knows that it's not, you know, within the realm of allowable things because everything is tracked. All the bracers, they're logged. It would be caught. (laughs) You all just kind of go about your collect days, try to act as normally as possible. 
the main outliers are Serathiel, but that could be explained as, oh, he's just not feeling well today, which is the excuse Fiernan gives for not bothering you. It's also true. <laughs> That's the benefit of being true. Yep. And Gwen, obviously, but you've always been the squirrely one, so... Yeah, people are probably just like, oh boy, that kid's being weird. They're like, oh god, did he discover caffeine again? Someone needs to take the espresso away from him. Yeah, yeah. They're mostly assuming you're highly caffeinated. It's it's also true. Virna kind of does want to check in with you guys, just at the end of the day. It's not unusual for teams to have a check-in or to get dinners together or whatever, so it's a little easier to explain. I feel like we should not be around a bunch of other Aptap people. Should not. Yeah, that might be a bad idea. Chaz gives the the invite to his laboratory, which is well warded and also probably bugged, but you know, it's fine. So it's warded, but it's also bugged. Hmm, cool. <laughs> I mean, it's Aptap, probably. He's also like, you know, we've been to, we've been to V's house already, so. Yeah. That's fair. Maybe it's not a good idea to bring Zerathiel back there. I'm just, I'm trying to keep your future marriage intact. <sighs> Appreciate the help. <laughs> the usual, like, fielding Gwen away from moving stuff probably occurs, I assume. Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we try to find a safe place to eat because it's an artificing lab. Like, there's all sorts of stuff right. lying all over. Some of it dangerous, some of it not, some of it just components. Chaz is like, I wouldn't normally advise eating in here, but also, you know, we need to keep things under wraps a little, so. Yeah, and it's less, uh, less obvious than going off campus again. Just gonna not eat, I think. I kind of, like, look around <laughs> gingerly. <laughs> I get, I, we can wait. You can eat back at your university. They, ha they have a cafeteria, okay. He's gonna take the leftovers and put them in the fridge back there. <laughs> <laughs> Just like any college student would. Exactly question is how long do do you forget about them and do they become sentient oh no <laughs> reheat them in my illegal rice cooker <laughs> 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 the ra does not know about oh no anyways uh no but i sort of like gingerly see myself like being like i just don't want to touch anything i just won't touch anything none of us had any crazy slip-ups like i had eyes on gwenid today i know serathiel didn't really leave his room jazz is like Please, please tell me exactly what did Gwyneth get up to today? I must know. You were keeping an eye on him because I look very indignant. He didn't. You, you didn't need to keep an eye on me, Virnin. I was doing great today. Yeah. Tell me again how you knew about the Greece incident. I, uh, but I wasn't there, so I didn't know anything about it. It's, there's nothing. I wasn't even in the building, Virnin. I told everyone that that I wasn't even there last night, and they. They all both- This is why. Oh, uh, wait. So you told everyone, just just like that, that you didn't- you weren't even in the building. Well, you know, they brought up- they were like, did you hear about the crazy, you know, events last night in the mm. Alchemy Lab? And I said, what events? I was on the other side of campus, sleeping. <laughs> I was not even here. I was washing my hair. Chaz is, like, barely controlling his laughter, like, mm, yeah, mm, you did a great job at <laughs> pretending you had no idea what was going on. Everyone looked very convinced, Chaz, okay? Everyone looked very convinced by my, my very <laughs> smooth acting. <laughs> so honestly, you should be thanking me. <laughs> he holds up both hands like, yes, of course, I believe you, definitely, mm-hmm. That face does not look like you feel okay. Well, anyways, what did you guys do today? <laughs> Well, funny you should ask that. He unfolds the letter and puts it in between everybody and sort of taps it. I receive some information. Is it from your husband? I like crowd in front of him. No, it's not. And I don't even know if he exists in this timeline. Thank you very much. Okay. I was just, that's a little disappointing. But okay, who is it from? That is the thing. I don't know. It's signed Emin Pathic. Doesn't ring a bell. Hmm. No, I'm not familiar with the name either. Hmm. So wait, what does the letter say? I'm like trying to like read it like over his shoulder. Chaz sort of rolls his eyes. He's like, I was going to summarize, but if you would like to read while I do so, feel free. Great. I snatched the letter. <laughs> Chaz like rolls his eyes. He's like, I memorize it anyway. Oh, but first he absolutely has to say, he's like, by the way, so this letter says the warlocks are calling themselves 
the warriors of the burning star. <laughs> Love that. So dramatic. And apparently this person has been tracking them and believes that their headquarters is in the old Dorvan tunnels beneath the city and wants our help. I mean, did you check with Tanya? Does she know this guy? I wanted to check to see if any of you knew first, but I will I will follow up with her, definitely. What old Dorvan tunnels is she talking about? Do, do, we, do we know anything about that? Fjernan grew up in the city. He knows exactly what the tunnels are, so... Yeah, I mean, it's there's tunnels under the city. Um, I don't remember exactly who was said to have built them, but they've been there for centuries, and they've been abandoned for almost as long. Are they safe? It feels like that. You know what? I know the answer to that. I just sort of like... <laughs> Chaz, like, arches an eyebrow, like, hmm, <laughs> ancient tunnels underground, are they safe? Hmm. No, they're not. <laughs> they're safe enough, but, um, I mean, there's the, the spell guard patrol them occasionally, just driving out any, you know, attempts at incursions and things into the city. It does seem like we should, you should see if your friend Tanya knows this person, because doesn't this kind of feel like a trap? I, like, look around at everybody. Oh, of course, <laughs> naturally. Just like go to this creepy place outside of town at midnight. Oh, he specifies. We're definitely at midnight. not going to murder you and sell your like organs in the black market. One hundred percent not going to happen. <laughs> How do you know I haven't already stolen your organs, Gwen? <laughs> I like look at you like because I'm like half thinking you could be serious. <laughs> <laughs> and Chaz is like, no, no, I have, I haven't actually. I don't. I have no interest in your organs. That was a joke. Okay, that's not like a weird. That's not a weird drow thing. No. Okay, okay. I just want to check. Because I, honestly, I will tell you, organs can be very useful in spellcasting, so. Okay, enough from the wizard. Before we disturb everyone. <laughs> 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 All right, so I guess, Chaz, maybe tomorrow you can ask Tanya uh, who this guy is. and uh, Good call. Yeah, we could do some more research about that section of the tunnels. I'm sure there's some books in the library. Mm. I will do it. I volunteer. Exactly. He claps, like, Gwen on the back, like, good job volunteering before he even says anything. Like, yay! <laughs> Gwen loves research. Excellent! That is true, but I, I, I don't like the- okay, well, I'll just do it. I was gonna do it anyway. Exactly! You were going to do it! I knew you would! Sort of, like, stare at you angrily. Okay. So, yeah, I will definitely go do some research on this, but just, we definitely need to figure out more about, like, who could have possibly sent this, because it just feels, mm. feels very suspicious. Right? Meet at midnight in the creepy tunnels underground. Woo. Hey, they didn't actually say to meet in the tunnels. They said to meet near the entrance. At midnight. Woo. <laughs> How is Serathiel doing today? Uh, or now? Oh, Serathiel's been very quiet, deliberately, this entire conversation. He's been pushing his food around on his plate and just sort of not saying anything. Uh, he, he's probably not going to speak unless directly spoken to. Chaz sort of looks over and is like, you haven't touched any of your food. Not hungry? Uh, no, I suppose not. Hmm. I, like, look awkwardly back between Virnan and uh, Sarathiel, and I'm like, so not a good conversation last night. Hmm. No, Gwen. <laughs> Obviously not. Okay. No, good isn't the word I would use for it. Would do you like to share anything? I don't know. Is it safe to share? He kind of looks at Virnan. More details of what I told you about in the Glade. Um, more about what the God Eater had done in Serathio's original timeline. Specifics are up to you. Ah. Uh, up to me? If you want to share any of it, but it's not my place to. 20 million people. I killed 20 million people. What? what? Why? No, that's not right. For what? Conquest, I assume. I don't know. No. I look at Virnan. No. No. You got it wrong, Virnan. That's not right. It makes sense. It's why they put a stamp on me. It's why they keep me locked up. Because I have the potential to murder 20 million people. So. Yeah, but potential and actually murdering are completely different things. Virnan, I'm looking like, I'm like ignoring Sarathiel. Look, Virnan, that's not, that's, <laughs> you know Sarathiel? That, all the lies that Aptap has given us so far, like, what, what? How is this not another lie? How do you know this is true? That's not the Serathiel we know. Serathiel says, I appreciate the faith in me. I do. But uh, I don't think they would have gone to all these lengths 
if there weren't a pretty good reason to try, right? So I think it's fair to assume that this particular... I just don't have a lot of reason to doubt its authenticity. I just... I, how how would anyone even do that? I, I, Apparently it was a plague. Oof. Like, take a little bit of a step back. You caused? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How... Uh, you don't have magic. How... How? Oh. I like, I'm, like, putting the pieces together. That's, yep. Yeah. One of the reasons that the mark exists. So you could do magic? So what, you're not, like... What kind... Okay, that's not relevant. I... Well, well, fuck. I just kind of sit down heavily. Yeah. Yeah, that was my reaction, too. Well, that's not that's not who you are in this timeline, Serathiel. Like, you're not that person. That was a different... Uh, yeah. But it is a possible version of me. But, so, someone somewhere in Aptap thought that the best possible way to contain you, he does the air quotes was to kidnap you, steal you, as an infant, as a child. Vernon steps in and clarifies, to contain the God Eater. They tried to kill me first, several times. Apparently they failed. And as a last resort, they uh, kidnapped me as an infant, yes. Oh. She just sort of is like, stewing over that information for a bit, like, okay. Well, I remember that Algadon and I were talking about us, whoever us was, taking down Aptap, and I... This is definitely a good enough reason. Is it? I don't know, I feel like it was a pretty rational response. No. And why do you feel that? Because I killed 20 million people. I feel like kidnapping a mass murderer out of their timeline is a very humane way to avoid that. A, a version of you did that, but like... And do you remember that, Sarathiel, killing all those people? I think you're missing the point entirely. If they had not kidnapped me out of my timeline, 20 million people would die. He does not say anything. He just keeps looking at you. That's assuming there's no other options. There were no other options? There was no other way to do this that didn't involve stealing a child? There were dozens and dozens of missions, Gwen. Everything, everything that could go wrong on them did. They were running out of time on his timeline. That doesn't mean it's an excuse, Viernan. That's not an excuse to do what happened. I'm not justifying it. You don't need to justify it. They did what they had to do to save 20 million lives. They stabbed me with the mock because it was the best way to contain my magic, which was spiraling dangerously out of control. According to two people. They did the best they could with what they had. Did they? Oh, fuck that. Fuck that, Sarathiel. It's uncomfortable for me, and that's fine. I don't need to be comfortable. 20 million lives are more important than my one life. So fine. Forget it. It's, I guess it doesn't matter you, in the end. No, no. Don't make excuses. <laughs> you aren't that person. Make excuses? I, this is my life, Gwen, and not yours. I get to decide what excuses need to be made. Not you. Yes, but- But nothing. This is my life. Keep your nose out of it. You don't get to decide- what if they're doing this to other people, Sarathiel? Do you think about that? What if it's not just you? If they're doing this to one person, they're probably doing it to other people too. And they were justified wrong. doing it to me. I even if I agree with that, even if you agree with that, does it mean they're justified doing it to everyone? What justification is this all? Gwened. Enough. It means that they've got a good track record. We have no idea what is the result of what is happening as a result of stealing you away from that timeline. We don't know. You're right, we don't. And I'm sick and tired of talking about it. I'm sick and tired of hearing all of you try to rationalize my own life to me. I was a monster in another timeline and I was taken out of it. Let's just leave it at that. I have no interest in pursuing it any further. Whatever you need me to do, I'll do it. All right? Just please leave it alone. I am begging you. I just kind of like kick the table and I look up and I'm like, this isn't what I signed up for. And I leave. I'll be right back. <laughs> Don't touch anything. He's just in the courtyard, angrily pacing and casting Firebolt. He's just casting it kind of at the ground, angrily. What wizards do instead of punching a pillow? <laughs> Start fires at the courtyard. I put them out again, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with tidal wave. I think I'm actually just like starting little fires in my hand and like putting them out right away. Like, okay. I see you coming. Chaz, he like approaches, he sees the fire and he's like, okay, I'll stand from over here. I whirl around and I'm like, this isn't what I signed up for. I was supposed to just be an intern. I was supposed to be getting coffee. I was supposed to just be having a good summer. 
Okay, Chasimir. And instead, instead, this fucking organization. And then I kind of look around and I'm like, shit. I lower it to like a whisper and I hiss. This fucking organization is stealing babies from timelines and doing all sorts of nefarious fucking shit. This is not a summer vacation. No, of course it's not. But, and I understand your frustrations, Gwen, and I do. But now that you're here, and now that we know what they're doing, don't you think have to stop we have them. an obligation? Exactly, an obligation to stop them. Yes, and how are we supposed to do that? And Serathiel's in there, in fucking denial about this being wrong in the first fucking place. Chaz takes a deep breath before continuing. This is very similar to, like, he's like, he knows this. He's right, though. It is he? It is his life. It is his life. That part he's right about. It is his life. You cannot bring but it up. What about it- other people? What about all the other people? Chaz, I wasn't kidding. We don't know how deep this goes. Exactly. We don't know. And if you want to investigate it, fine. I can help you. But just, as he said, leave it alone. Just let him sit there and fucking be a whipping boy? Watch him as he fucking, like, lashes himself over something that he didn't fucking do? He needs to deal with it on his own, Gwen. If he says to leave it, then leave it. (sighs) We can still help him. I just... We can't let this sit, Jasmir. I just need you to promise me that despite what Serathiel says, we're going to look into this and we're going to stop it. Oh, I swear to you. (laughs) I will not rest until we find out everything about this. Okay. I just sort of, like, slump. And I'm just like, you know, sometimes... Sometimes I wish I'd stayed home. Do you ever wish that? Oof. Oof. Do you ever wish you stayed home? Oof. Chaz sort of twitches and crouches down next to you. No, but I do understand where you're coming from. Your father seems to care about you quite a bit. I always thought he was overprotective, but now I'm starting to think maybe it was just like the right amount. Oh no, he is overprotective. (laughs) I mean, yeah, I understand to some extent you are his only child and you're all he's got. It's kind of a good feeling, Chaz. I hope you have that too. Well, I guess you have your husband. That give him a pinch on his cheek. Chaz rolls his eyes. He's like, I told you, it's a possible future. I haven't found if he's even here yet. Mm, Okay. Okay. I'm just saying he sounded really hot. So that's all I'm saying. He was. He was super hot, Gwen. (laughs) I I get kind of like quiet and serious again. I'm just like, okay, I guess we should, I guess we should get back. I like turn and like kind of like out of nowhere. I just kind of like fling myself into his arms and give him like a really big hug. Chaz just sort of laughs and he's just like, oh no, what will I do with my arms full of you and sort of squeezes you back. Thanks for coming after me, Chaz. I mean, it means a lot. I don't want you to set the courtyard on fire. I could get fired. Okay. Well, I wasn't going to set it on. Okay, maybe. But anyways, I like doesn't take myself. I'm like, okay, let's go back. He sort of winks like it was all business. I didn't care about you. <laughs> you liability, you wink. As we like turn away, I like set a small fire in the grass. Yeah, Serathiel definitively does not want to talk about it. And if they sit there in silence during that whole conversation, Serathiel would be totally fine with that. Okay. It's really, in the ball is in Viernan's court. I mean, he's known you not a long time, but long enough to know when to kind of let it lie. That outburst was very uncharacteristic. So he's he's definitely going to let it lie. Serathiel takes a very small bite of food. Um, I noticed you didn't... Get much of a trance in last night. Would you like me to make you another potion? I'll manage. Thank you. Okay. It's a standing offer. And they just continue to sit in silence. I'm going to come back in and I'm going to be like, by the way, if anyone sees any buttons lying around on the ground, if you could just return those to me, that'd be great. Do I want to know what exactly did you do? (laughs) It's nothing. I wasn't even here, so I don't know what you're talking about, but... (laughs) If you did see Gwen. any buttons on the floor, just, just, I probably, they probably belong to me. So just, you know, if you could return them, that'd be great. Oh, I know. Serethiel uh, thinks about it. And then he reaches in. You know how some shirts have like an extra button sewn in near the collar? He pulls it off and he slides it over to you so you can start your collection again. Oh, I look at it and I'm like, that wasn't one of my, you know what? Thank you, Serathiel. That actually means a lot. I take it and pocket it. For whatever it's worth, I did not mean to upset you. I just really don't want to talk about it right now. Yeah, that's that's okay. We won't talk about it. So what are we going to do about this? What's his name? Eminpathic. 
Sure. Well, since none of us seem to know him, I am going to ask Tanya, since he seems to have connections with her. And I'm going to go look up uh, the tunnels and see what I can find. Maybe figure out if there's like a best place or anything we need to avoid while we're there. Anything I can do? You can buy Tanya a present because I appreciate her so much. She gets like very emotional. I appreciate her so much. And she's done so much for us. So it feels like silent for a second. Then he says, okay, I'll think of something. I mean, you don't have to, but if there's something you want to do, you can. It's fine. I'll think of something. You could also help Gwen it out if you wanted. I wonder if we could look for, just in the books too as well, for a mention of this M empathic, just in, in case it's in there for, I don't know, could be like a historical thing. In the history books for some reason. I mean, who fucking knows? This fucking w- wibbly, white, wobbly time shit. I, I gotta say, like, being a DM again is kind of hilarious because the things you think your players are just gonna be like, oh, yay, this is exciting. I really want to do this, like, right now, not think through it at all, versus yep. the things that your players way overthink. <laughs> like, this was just supposed to be a simple plot hook to get you somewhere. <laughs> it's just a skosh to suspect, you know? Like, we've never heard his name before. How does he know what we're looking into? Does he exactly. work for Laptop? It also, you people, you DMs are like torture demons, right? So if you don't fucking do this <laughs> shit... It's like, oops, guess you should have checked into it first. You're all dead. Let's be fair. I would do that. Val is much too nice to do that. I maintain that being a DM is like a corrupting influence. Like it's like the absolute power corrupts absolutely. So I feel like you just have to be like, I'm expecting it. Like at any minute now, she's going to turn around and she's going to inflict emotional trauma on us. Me? It's because we're used to Tessa's. That's why. So anyways, we're going to go research the hell out of this thing that obviously we don't need to, but I don't care. We're doing it anyway, Val. Okay. He wants to know all the structural integrity of the underground tunnel. Yes. I mean, it's not a bad idea to have a general idea, so that's fine. <laughs> and Sir Ethel, he seriously will like go out present shopping for Tanya, unless someone pulls him away. He feels safer following someone else's directions at this particular moment. He does not really trust himself anymore, so... Taking orders uh, is a little more comfortable, a little more comfy for him. V was serious in the suggestion of, you know, maybe go with Gwened, because you going unsupervised into the city is not going to fly with Aptap, but he was planning to work on the file a little bit more. He probably, I don't know if he told you or not that he's working on it. Yeah, if, if he wants to. It like, seems like a ter- like <laughs> shitty, sad file, but okay. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's diving into that. He's diving into the Silvery Moon file, just trying to find anything that you guys have maybe missed. I do like the idea of of Viernan being like, okay, I have to read this file, but I'm not letting you mope anymore. So I will read this file as we walk into town to get Tanya a prison. (laughs) Pretty much. (laughs) Fresh air. Let's go. I need to I need to read, but I'll make it work. (laughs) He he did grow up with the nerdiest of nerds, Sel Wayne. So he's he's pretty good at reading and walking too. Anyway, let's go ask Tanya. Do you know this man? You find your bestie. She is at her desk, as is to be expected. Right. I'm also going to retroactively say that maybe you guys had your check-in around lunchtime rather than dinner so that you don't really waste a day. You only have three of them. Chaz sees her at the desk like, honestly, do you ever leave? (laughs) Look who's talking. I mean... I'm the one who gives your desk all the action. I told you that it's good for more than just sitting out and studying, right? And wow. Writing. I didn't think you were into girls. No, Tanya. <laughs> he just laughs like, you know what I meant. Go find someone to have sex with on this desk. <laughs> but nobody gives a compliment like you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, first of all, again, thanks for the coffee. <laughs> Secondly... I have a question, of course. That's, I mean, not that I'm not here all the time to bother you whether or not I have a question. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm kind of getting tired of you actually having questions, not just wanting to say hi. I know. I miss. No, I'm, 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 I'm joking. I'm. Oh, well, well, I mean, I... I mean, not joking, but... Okay. But I also do miss, you know, interrupting your, all of your paperwork, sitting on everything, and... I don't miss that. <laughs> oh. I just miss, you know, not drama. Yeah. It's been a while. Anyway, he puts the note on her desk. I got the note. Oh, yeah. Who is this Emin Pathic? Um, he's I mean, not really a friend. He's more of an acquaintance, but get on well enough. No, he's um, he's a ranger. He's been kind of unofficially working for the city, keeping things out of the tunnels and stuff. Mm-hmm. 
And would you say that he's handsome? <laughs> I mean, you know that I'm not into guys, right? I mean, just as a person, like, you know, you're very lovely and I'm not into girls. I have eyes, Tanya. <laughs> I don't know if he's your type. Oh, he's smart. Got it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he has brain cells. Got it. Sure, that's what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> that stops him and he's like, wait, no. What? Tanya, is he drow? Yeah. What? That blows his mind. He's like immediately jumps off her desk. Okay. Um, I mean, you didn't think you're the only good drow around. I I didn't, but I I've never talked to or seen or oh my, this is a lot. <laughs> Just take a breath. You'll be fine. I am breathing. Uh, I think. <laughs> Are you sure? Here, here's a mirror. Hold it onto your nose. Oh, ha ha. <laughs> and how exactly did a drow ranger become one of your acquaintances, hmm? I mean, how did you think I found you? That's true. You do have a habit of collecting. <laughs> Strays? <laughs> stray, yes. I wasn't going to call myself a stray, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love you. Mm. Mutual. Oh, boy. That changes a lot of things. Does it? He's got a lead for you guys. Yes. Seems like a pretty big lead. Yes. I know, Tanya. I'm just nervous. <laughs> You'll be fine. I just, I don't know how to talk <laughs> to another drow. I don't know how long he's been topside. I don't know. Oh, dear. <laughs> I don't know, which is already a sentence I don't like. <laughs> you know that. Oh, and I, I, I've been saying he, um, it's actually more of a he-they situation. Oh. Well, gender is fake anyway, so it's hmm. fine. But, um, yeah, I mean, they've been up for a while. I, I didn't really ask for too many details about it. Seemed, you know, rude. Right, yeah. Well, maybe, maybe he's not like me. Maybe he loves talking about his feelings and his past. <laughs> Or maybe he's exactly like me and doesn't like talking about his feelings or his past. Keep going. I'm, I'm just doing some paperwork. Well, I mean, you got a couple days to figure it out, right? You said, you know, I, yeah. I, I, I peeked at the letter. I'm sorry. Of course. Of course. Don't worry. I'm I the secretary. What do you expect? Mm, exactly. You have to. Where else would you get your delicious gossip? Right. Just, you know, don't go sharing any of my methods. Oh, no, of course not. Good. But, all right. That was my question, and now we can hang out drama-free, and you can tell me about all the cute girls that you have seen recently. Oh my god, there is this girl in accounting? I'm in a library. I have, like, ten books that I've gotten, and probably not relevant, and now, I, now I'm going back to the librarian to ask for, like, like, for actual specific help to find the book that I'm looking for. You're also thinking, hmm, maybe instead of the AppTap library, I should have tried to go yet again to the Vault of the Sages. Maybe my library card came through this time. That's, I was actually thinking that. But. All right, make me an investigation roll to see if you find anything relevant here. Just hoping it's better than the last one. It's pretty easy to find some records. You didn't really know about the tunnels because you didn't grow up in Silvery Moon. Yeah. Although I find it hilarious that none of your college buddies have told you about the tunnels because, like, it feels like the college kid thing to do, like, yeah. away from home for the first time, go sneak down into the creepy old tunnels. I feel like maybe I'm just not cool enough. So you easily find information about the tunnels. The city was said to contain dwarven tunnels beneath its streets. <laughs> Yay! That's it! <laughs> is that is that, like, all I find? That's, like, I comb through, like, a ten, like, ten books, and literally all I can find is one <laughs> fucking sentence being like, guess there's some tunnels, and I'm like, well... So what you find is you, there were a lot of rumors about tunnels and things like that, a lot of unsubstantiated things, but there are also actually some tunnels beneath the city. They're kept relatively secret because if people knew that there was a way to get into the city outside the Mythal, that would be kind of bad. <laughs> yeah, it feels like a good way to like, oh man, it's going to be like a bunch of smugglers down there. It feels like good smuggler paths. Yeah, I mean, like, it's it's a potential invasion point. So, like, there's constantly guards going through and just making sure that there's not actually anybody under there planning attacks and things. 
but they're more concerned with the bulk of the city and that there's not a lot of time to patrol all of it. As I'm reading this, I'm just like, it just feels like they should collapse these. It just feels like a dumb security standpoint. So yeah, weird. but collapsing them could collapse part of the city. <laughs> it's under the streets. Well, the, the other thing they could do is they could use a wizard to fill them with rocks or something. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I love that that's his first thought. I mean, it's not a bad idea, actually. My second thought was water. I'm like writing notes being like, okay, note talked, send letter to <laughs> heads of Silvery Moon <laughs> for ideas for city protection. <laughs> I'm going to write a letter to the editor and be like, by the way, these tunnels, very insecure. <laughs> and I have some ideas. Somebody, like Vernon knows where, where a tunnel entrance would be. Are there a bunch of them or is like there were like one big tunnel entrance? There's a bunch of them all over. A lot of them have been blocked off, mostly by the proprietors near them. Some are kept open as entry points for the guards to patrol. And the one that was mentioned in the letter was one of the more common ones. That's fair. Okay, I'm also going to look up I'm Empathic and just see if I can find art. I'm going to try to look up anything about that name. Yeah, there's not really any reference to him. Fair enough. He seems to just be some dude. Like, Aptap has extensive records, but also. <laughs> <laughs> he is just some guy. Okay, I think that's fair. So I think I wrap up. I feel like that's all the information I could reasonably expect uh, to find out at this point. So, yeah, I, I call it night and we're, we're just going to we'll figure it out the rest of what's going on tomorrow. Okay. I spend the rest of the night trying to, like, make friends with librarians. What type of store do you ask Vernon to take you to? Or do you just wander past stores? Until you see something that looks like what you want. Serathiel's not, like, used to shopping. Like, he wanted to go shop. He's never gone shopping before, first of all. <laughs> but he, and he's always kind of wanted to. But after, like, the huge traumatic revelation of reading his file, he's gone back to being mostly uncertain. And, like, I can, I have this image in my head of, like, Viernan, like, mostly paying attention to the file and reading and being there just because he has to be there to escort Serathiel out. And Serathiel, like, nervously walks around the market, like... She likes flowers, right? People like flowers? I feel like people like flowers. We should get us some flowers. He goes over to the florist. <laughs> Maybe we can we can get her flowers. I don't know what kind she likes. I don't know either. I guess I'll just pick some that look nice. And I went with, I, I literally looked up thank you bouquets, and I think this one's perfect. Aww. A, because it's very bright and happy. And B, because lesbian flag colors. Exactly. I was going to say it's lesbian colors. I immediately was like, yes. And he spends, like, probably way too much time, like, going over with the florist. Like, can we add something brighter? And can can the note be nice? Like, I would really like a nice note. She really did help us a lot. And, like, probably spending a little bit too much time with it. Vernon, like, was reading while you were walking, but he's he's been watching you while you've been doing this. And it's just, you can be convinced as you want that, you know, you deserve this and all that. But this is not exactly adding up to that evidence of that. This is just more evidence in his column of Serathiel is a good boy TM. He tries very hard to be a good boy. And he spends a lot of time like getting the arrangement just right. And like the florist is probably like, okay, move it along. I've got like other customers. <laughs> <laughs> because Serathiel's like, no, it has to be perfect. She's so nice. You don't understand. But eventually he does like pay for it and probably gives her a very generous tip because <laughs> he, yeah. he, he can read the room. And eventually he turns around and he has this like lovely little bouquet of like orange, pink and red. And he's like, okay, I guess I'll guess I'll give this to her. Or I guess I should just leave it on a desk. I don't want to be too weird about it. <laughs> he will have like a thank you card, but he'll keep it like vague because he doesn't want Aptap to know why he's thanking her. <laughs> so it'll just be like, thank you. Just like a general, thank you so much. Like not signed at all or anything. Like if it ends up hooking her up with the cute girl in accounting, Serathiel is fine with that. Right? So yeah, I think that's what he eventually does. He walks all the way back to Aptap with it very carefully. <laughs> Because it's a glass vase and it's it's fucking fancy. <laughs> and then he just leaves it on her desk. He suggests that we could go see if Gwen needed any help or check in with Chaz or whatever. Or if you want, you could train with somebody or just you know, read a book for a bit. Yeah, so I feel probably just going to go back to his room. Yeah. Like I, yeah. Like I said, the offer stands if you want a potion. I'll uh, thank you, but no, I'll be fine. Okay. And he gives you your space. And that was enough outside for Serathiel. He goes back into his room for another day. Aw, poor boy. Tainia will probably drag him out for training at some point, because she is also hashtag concerned. That's valid. Doesn't know the details, but is hashtag concerned. 
Hey everyone, Val here. Thank you for tuning in to the latest episode of Crit Fail Club, Restoration. If you can't wait to hear what happens next, check out our Discord server for episodes and pre-release, or to listen in live as we record. You can join us by going to bit.ly slash cfcdiscord. For more information on the show, character biographies, and links to social media, head to our website, critfail.club or critfailclub.com. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. We don't advertise at all, so if you like what you hear, tell a friend who might also enjoy the show, post on social media about it, or leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Full episodes are available on our YouTube channel, bit.ly slash cfc channel, or on other major podcast platforms. Thanks again for tuning in.